this video I'm going to go over a DSFW health check uh, just and specifically a script that I've written to, to help you with uh, that, that process uh, like uh, there's really I don't really have a there's not a TID specifically on this uh, there is this TID here to help verify a DS domain services for Windows is installed and, and working uh, so if you click on go to the helpful TIDs or just search for this TID uh, you'll see variety of commands that you can run just to, after you install DSFW to make sure it's running this is something that's good to to do uh, periodically just to make sure that your your domain controller is, is running I've also uh, come up with a script that does uh, more than than this it does some e-directory checking and it does a lot more uh, several uh, commands so I'll, I'm gonna go over that uh, right now so if you go to DSFW dude dot com I've got in the download section a bunch of scripts. Uh, some I've written, some development is written at Novell, uh, some other people have written as well. Uh, if you download the, uh, this script, DSFW Health Check, uh, that, that's the script here. You can use wget if you're not on the server. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but you might be puttied into your server and you're browsing for more extension. Just right click and copy and go to your putty session, in this case a terminal do wget, and if you just right click and paste, there it is, it'll download, and voila, you got it. Uh, like every script that when I download, uh, I prefer to, well you have to make it uh, executable, so chmod plus x dsfw e directory health check, right? And I like to run the DOS to Unix, especially if you open this script with Notepad or something on a Windows box. You might have some some uh, hidden Windows characters uh, in the script and might not let it run properly. So let's uh, run that DOS to Unix. Just goes and makes sure it's in Unix format and you're ready to go. Now this is an e directory server. I'm going to run it on first and show you what it does, DSFW e directory, so you can run it on both an e directory or a, a, a DSFW server. Uh, first thing it does, it's just warning you it, it's when it's done, it's going to email the um, to these two people right here. By default I just have the admin at whatever your domain name is and then myself. And I usually do that because I ask customers to download this and or other scripts and run it and then if it as long as Postfix is installed and the email is working from the server, usually I can get the log file or or an email uh, if this the, if the script uh, ran properly. In this case, it's going to email the at an attachment um, when it's done. If you don't want to do that, just say no. You, you don't have to do what you just. It just needs an N in there, and it'll it'll uh, abort the script. So let's just run it, and I'll, I'll show you later on some of the configuration in the script as well. So we're just going to run it. Do we want to continue? Yes. As you see, it's just doing a few things, checking that the dib is there, the DB file, just one of the database files, checking the status of e directory, uh, check, and then checking time sync, replica synchronization. It actually uses NDS trace and forces a heartbeat. Starts it here and then ends it here. So you got about 10 seconds in there for it to to somewhat synchronize. If you get an error, you might want to run in in uh, report sync in the replica synchronization. You might want to run the script again or manually uh, force a heartbeat, and then from there troubleshoot any errors. But so this this gives you an idea if everything is working. If it's not, there's some suggestions, some tids to to look at. It's not a complete uh, resolution uh, type practice uh, um, script that that gives you exact uh, things to look at but it gets you pointed in the right direction if, if something fails. So we've got that for e directory. Uh, you can see it just has goes through eight different checks, uh, making sure that things are set up. So you might have your NCP server uh, set up, but if you do like an IP-A, you'll see that the server listed might be different in the IP-A versus what's on your NCP server object, or uh, what's even in your host file. Sometimes people change their host file and it hasn't, uh, in, even if you boot up, it might not change. Uh, a lot of times you need to run SUSE config if you make some changes in your host file. On an OES server, 
you just need to make sure you're if you're changing IP addresses there's a script for for OES to to change all that to make sure it's changed in the proper locations all right that's it for the e directory we'll go move on to our DSFW server you can see we've got it right here if we something else I do in case you didn't know is I, I like to put the script in the bin directory uh, of my whatever user I'm running it from I'm usually logged in as root it's not a great practice but I usually do that if it, that way if it's in the bin directory the path is exported for your user uh, so you can just type in the the name of the script and it'll come up otherwise you need to specify the full path or if you're in that directory do a dot slash and then the the script so we're just gonna run this it's gonna issue a Kerberos ticket so we just need to put in the administrator password and again we get the same message warning us about the uh, the setting for email say yes and you can see it's doing the same thing instead of just doing e directory it's checking all the services and again checking time sync the first eight are pretty much identical uh, on an e directory and a DSFW server and after that we've got uh, I think there's about 35 checks that we do here uh, some some of them probably not anything big uh, to check but it doesn't hurt either so uh, I'll let you you can kind of check to see the the NS lookup checking that that works uh, you can see each command that it's running so if you wanted to do this on your own a specific command you could just copy and paste that and run that specific command as well uh, there's a variety of uh, WB uh, info commands that it's running different conversions it's doing it for administrator if you're getting an error say like right here uh, for it's doing a conversion for administrator uh, you need to specify user every you every domain should have administrator if you've changed that name or if you, there's another user that you'd like to specify just y you can instead of administrator do WB info dash and, and then whatever the username this one will you run this it gets the the SID information from here you take that SID information and and uh, pop that in and then you can do a SID to name conversion it will return the name make sure that that's working going back and forth and then this is converting to a UID with a capital S so you can see each one uh, some of them are built up on the the previous one so if this one fails most likely this and this will will fail as well uh, it, but it will also will give you some troubleshooting techniques uh, ideas uh, you know taking land trace or packet traces or, or LDAP traces uh, things along that line you can see uh, checking Samba, check, there's just a lot of different things. Uh, the unique domain ID, uh, if you're unfamiliar with that attribute, that's the attribute that lets DSFW know if this object is in the domain or not. If your object is not showing up, your, a user is not showing up for some reason, maybe they're, they're missing the unique domain ID. Uh, this is just checking on some very key object, objects. Uh, so like your the container where your, your domain is mapped to or installed this is pulling up just the as, uh, as showing us the domain name making sure that that has a unique domain name this is a map domains it's actually O equals Nobel but for DSFW you can see it either way uh, so it's that's how it's returning it the KRB TGT your ticket granting ticket uh, your domain controller container and actual the actual uh, DC object itself inside the domain containers object or container so these you know they're probably not going to affect most people but it's just a nice check to to do and let you know that hey maybe I need to check unique domain ID on some other users if, if there's something go along with them as well going wrong with them as well uh, this one you might if you want to run this you're gonna have to open up the script and look because it doesn't uh, interpret uh, it quite right as you can see right there but uh, it's just doing an LDAP search uh, with this as a filter and for and returning the net log on making sure that that's working as we get to the end uh, all of these if there's an error it's going to return it uh, is, is in red uh, and and so you know that there's uh, something and give you a suggestion uh, the last three it might not be a problem so they're not returned as uh, in red it's I put it in yellow uh, you can see right here uh, we, the decrypt integrity checked uh, failed error which means a bad password gives you a little suggestion here you know look look for principles with the dollar sign these are the ones that can cause the most problems so here uh, workstation DSFW here we've got it it's five times we've had a bad login might want to check that that workstation uh, I just have the IP address of I just manually populated this into uh, um, the KDC log so that's why it's returning that 
address normally would be a workstation address but uh, I just made sure that it, it reported that way I didn't want to go set up a workstation and make it fail and stuff so that's why it's showing that IP address but you know normally it's an IP address of your workstation that would show up there uh, so those are the key ones you might want to say oh my gosh somebody's you know trying to hack in as administrator constantly or maybe you have an application that's logging in automatically and it is configured with a bad password this will tell you right here and where it's coming from so it makes it nice with DSFW it could be a good idea about that so that's a, a potential problem not necessarily a problem but a potential problem same thing with a client not found if you're seeing a lot of these uh, I try to I usually five is probably the minimum I I'm concerned about five to ten and, and from there you know however big it is if you have hundreds of them thousands of them I've seen that definitely a problem it can definitely slow down your domain controller so this is a, just a brief simple health check gives you an idea where you're at we'll uh, look at the the script itself uh, so I, I talked about the email to setting right here so you can see by default I have my address and then the administrator at you know the domain so just uh, if you want just wipe that out put your email address if you don't want it to send an, uh, an email when it's done as assuming that your work your server can do that uh, just change that to zero or re just remove it uh, and then it won't uh, send an email so those are some of the, the things you can see uh, what the script is doing as well in here the different commands that it's uh, checking um, NDS repair dash C uh, I, I this is just gives it color as well uh, or makes it in, in bold uh, I, I like to run it with a black background uh, a lot of people you know might have it set with the defaults like this uh, this makes it a little hard for the yellow I understand even the green um, but in the you know the, this stands out in bold a little bit a little bit better but uh, uh, I like to run it in black uh, all, uh, just the white is a little too too much of a contrast for me um, continue going through uh, the script you, you just you can see if you if it fails at something uh, it, it'll give you some suggestions uh, let me run it so you might have a, a DNS not running on the domain controller it might be an ADC addition which is you know as a as an additional domain controller and you don't have DNS configured on it I mean it might be configured but it's not being actively ran so you don't have it listed in the resolve.conf and, and and things like that so you might you if you are get an error you want to do a check config novel dash name D and just see what the setting is at if it's on and you don't have it configured uh, on purpose then you need to make this setting to turn it off because that's what the script is checking is checking this setting right here so if we turn it off then it's not going to go and check for the the uh, uh, resolve.conf and if we run the script again we'll see uh, it, it takes a slightly different clear path right here it's not checking that DNS is running um, even though I haven't stopped it but it's still it's not going to check that and if we go to the resolve.conf we'll see uh, what it does there as well so right here so it's just saying hey no LDND is not set to load, so just ignore this section. But still, you need to be able to do NS lookup and everything like, thing like that. So uh, some, that's something new that I've just uh, recently added uh, to the script. But as you can see, it's checking every type of LDAP search, the different methods. You might have a problem with one of the methods, so it's going to check all three of the, the main uh, types as well. Um, Samba connection. Anyway, this isn't a, a complete health check type of a of a script it doesn't do everything but it does more than it, it, it automates quite a bit for you it makes it uh, gives you a good idea of where your domain controller is at I mean there's still things like utilization and memory of the on the server and threads you know there's other things that could be going uh, on that you might need to, to troubleshoot uh, ACLs on your file system if you have a GPO issue it's right now it's not checking uh, that type of stuff but it is giving you uh, you know fairly broad um, uh, check of your domain controller so I hope this script is helpful hope this video is helpful for you and uh, appreciate you for uh, watching it thank you